This is a wooden motorcycle lift table. I built it myself to get my bikes off the ground to make working on them more convenient. Alongside tie-down hooks, there is also a wheel chock to secure any bike, which can also be removed to make space for a paddock stand instead. Wheels that swivel and lock in place allow you to freely spin your bike around or put the lift out of the way. And it's all sealed, so that any oil, fuel or other fluid you mess on it can be wiped away without soaking into the wood. Obviously it does have a few issues because I built it and not a real carpenter. But if you might want to build one of your own, subscribe and keep watching because I'll tell you what it's good for and what I would now change. I've wanted to make something like this for quite a while now. And since I've been working on the lower half of my bikes quite a lot recently, it seemed like a good time to finally do it, so I can spend less time on my knees. But first, there are a few questions I'm pretty sure you have. It really depends on what you think the word lift in motorcycle lift applies to. Is it the contraption itself being able to lift and lower, or is it just that the motorcycle ends up lifted off of the ground? I'll leave it to you to decide, but to be honest, titling this video Motorcycle Workbench wouldn't be as cool. And since I already have a ramp that I use to load bikes into my pickup and get the 390 into the workshop, I figured I didn't need a table that raised and lowered. I know, I know, wood weak, steel strong. And to be honest, I was worried about this the entire time I was building it. Steel would definitely be stronger, but since I'm a useless welder and I actually enjoy working with wood, I figured I would make it work. Where's the fun in that? And also... So nevertheless, I cracked on with nothing more than hopes and dreams. Oh, and also six rather chunky legs, four beams for each end of the table, four longer beams for each side of the table, one suitable tabletop, an array of offcuts to reinforce the tabletop, six swivel caster wheels with brakes, four eye bolts for tie downs, plenty of beefy fasteners, more wood sealant than this image shows in your favorite color, and finally, a wheel chock. First, I built the wooden table itself. I began by making a frame like this, that will later be attached to the legs. It consists of two of the short beams attached to the top of two of the long beams. Since I was using rather large screws, I even drilled little pilot holes for the base of the screws to prevent the wood from splitting. And I also used wood glue on every join to add some much needed extra strength. And with one frame completed, I repeated the exact same process to make a second one. Again, I pre-drilled pilot holes for the legs to be attached to the two frames, but this time I used man-sized coach screws. I cheated by using the screws to mark where to pre-drill the legs before applying a liberal coat of wood glue again and putting my impact to use, which made light work of these beefy screws that should take up the weight of a bike nicely when spread across six legs. I repeated the process another five times before I was left with the first sighting of what it might look like. And then the second rectangular frame endured the same routine to be attached to the legs as well. I then mocked up where I wanted the wheel chock to sit, so I could place braces exactly where I would bolt the chock down. However, I did have to reposition the two front mounting holes to suit me better. I ended up with a total of four braces that will hopefully be adequate where the bike's wheels will rest, which meant the final piece of wood could be placed. This tabletop isn't as thick as I would have liked, but should get the job done if it's secured and supported properly. So, around 46,000 screws later, 
I could drill the mounting holes for the wheel chuck and mock up where the eye bolts will be positioned. Somehow I managed to get the symmetrical lump of timber outside to get it ready for staining and smooth off all the edges. I opted for grey sealant since black is always very dark on camera and a nice mahogany is more suited to a dining room table than a motorcycle lift. And sadly, they didn't have blue. It took about 46 more coats than I expected and I got bored of filming at around the first coat, as you can see here. But once grey, at least on top, it could get its final touches. I screwed a wheel onto each leg while wondering if they would be strong enough because they looked a lot smaller under this colossal contraption than they did in the hardware store. The wheel chalk gave it some purpose, making it look more like a motorcycle bench rather than an old-fashioned flammable hospital stretcher. And lastly, the four eye bolts were bolted down to the tabletop, which meant there was only one thing left to do. With zero run-up or muscles, I made it look like hard work. But the good news is the bench survived and seemed to be working. So now that it's a reality and I've actually used it, I do have a few thoughts. Firstly, what I would change. The dimensions for starters are almost perfect. I stole the dimensions from looking at real bike lifts online, which helped. The two meter length is perfect for any bike I will ever want to work on, and so is the 60 centimeter width. I built it to be able to accommodate anything from a dirt bike to a super bike but probably not a gold wing. The height is also perfect to work on, but I wouldn't mind it about 10 centimeters lower, purely to make getting bikes on and off a little bit easier. Then it does probably need bigger and stronger wheels, but I'll see how they last over time. If they are a problem, I'll either upgrade them or just remove them altogether because that will also lower the height. However, I do need to be able to move it out of the way all by myself. They seem perfect so far, but I am slightly nervous. Wider tie down points would be more secure, but this is the best place that I could mount these and it actually works really well. It's not like transporting your bike where tie downs need to be super tight and secure, it's more like a catch net to prevent your bike from tipping over. And usually it doesn't even compress the suspension. Originally, I wanted to use wing nuts to fasten the wheel chuck down so that I could quickly remove it with nothing more than just my fingers if I wanted to replace it with a paddock stand for example to get both wheels off of the ground for a tire change for example. But I wasn't sure how secure wing nuts would be so I settled on regular nuts. But the truth is an impact is probably faster than my fingers in any case. You can also just pull this pin out to adjust the wheel chuck to whatever size wheel you want to put in it, so it will suit any bike. So was it worth it? Knowing everything I know now, I think it was. It's going to make filming much easier because my tripod can't even go as low as the rear sprocket for example. It was relatively expensive at about $300 but that's still a fraction of the price of a real lift and 10 times more fun to make. It's the perfect height to make jobs like adjusting your chain much easier because you can now see the lines to align your wheel. But the truth is it's probably more trouble than it's worth to get the bike onto here for a two minute job. However, just about every other job that takes more than an hour will be easier on this, as long as it's below the height of the tank. If you're replacing your chain and sprockets, doing an engine rebuild, or even installing a new tail tidy or exhaust, this is all at the perfect height and it will make it easier and a bit of an occasion. But anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts of my take on a motorcycle lift and what you would do to make it better. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next ride.